Hey, what's up everyone? I welcome you to the channel. I hope you are fine. This is my first Q&A video and there were some questions that were buzzing in my comment section and these questions are mostly from the evaporation and I thought to make a Q&A video so that it will be helpful for others to note the questions and the solutions to it. So without further ado, I'll start the video and if you are new to the channel, please do not forget to hit the subscribe button and press the bell icon to get all the notifications and I hope you will like this video. So the first question is from Rajan. It says that the net radiation into an open water surface is 300 watt per meter square and we are given an air temperature that is 42 degrees centigrade. Assuming that there is no sensible heat or ground heat flux and we also have to take the density and Finally, in this question, I am sorry the whole of the comment is not visible to you. In this question, we have to actually find the evaporation rate using this given 300 watt per meter square of net radiation and the temperature 42 degree centigrade and the density that we have to take for this uh, particular question, the density of water at 42 degree centigrade was asked to be 997 kilogram per meter cube. And so we have to proceed accordingly. So at, at the first I have the, okay, let me use some other ink. Okay. So we have the net radiation I hope this is not that much clear to you let me zoom out it a bit net radiation let us take it to be R n and that is equal to 3 100 watt per meter square so we have the net radiation that is rn and that is 300 watt per meter square next we have the temperature let us take it to be t and it is equal to for sorry about that 42 degree centigrade so we have the temperature and we have the net radiation so and we also have the density of water at 42 degrees centigrade that is let us take it to be rho and that is 997 kg per meter cube so this is it now let me tell you one thing the latent heat of vaporization the latent heat of vaporization I'm really sorry about the handwriting because my stylus isn't that good I'm trying my best to show it nicely uh, but I hope you can get it that the latent heat of vaporization I'm representing it by L and this L is given by 2 501 minus 2.37 times the temperature we have so this is the equation for the latent heat of vaporization that is 2501 minus 2.37 times the temperature that is given to us so that means our latent heat of vaporization is gonna be 2501 minus 2 point three seven multiplied by forty two degrees and if we are going to calculate this one then we will be getting latent heat of vaporization as two four zero one point four six kilojoules per kilogram so remember the unit for latent heat of vaporization will be kilojoules per kilogram Okay, 
So this was our first step. That first we needed to find the latent heat of vaporization using the temperature we had. Now why did we needed the latent heat of vaporization? Because the formula for evaporation rate is net radiation Rn and it's divided by rho times L. L means the latent heat of vaporization. So the net radiation is 300 watt per meter square and divided by rho is 997 multiplied by 2401.46 now this 2401.46 is kilojoule per kilogram but in SI unit it is joule so what we are gonna do we are gonna multiply 1000 with this 2401.46 and that will give me upon calculation as 1.253 times 10 raised to the power minus 7 meters per second. So this is my evaporation rate but the unit is in meter per second and that is making the value little bit cumbersome or you can say this value is really very small when we are taking in terms of meter per second 1.253 times 10 to the power minus 7 is quite a very small term so let us do one thing let us take it to millimeters per day so if i want to make it millimeters per day to this number let us multiply thousand so that the meter is converted to millimeter and when i am dividing it by the denominator i am dividing it by 60 multiplied by 60 multiplied by 24 24 for the days for the hours in a day 60 for the minutes in hour and the 60 for the seconds in a minute so now if I am going to solve this one this will be coming to be 10.826 millimeters per day and this is my evaporation rate per day of that particular open water surface which is asked in the question. So I have been writing this very frequently and I have been scrolling down very quickly so I wish that you will be writing it simultaneously and if you haven't please go back to the video start from where the video started and write the solutions if you are having doubt in it and also write in the comment section if you have any queries about this particular solution uh, now before starting the second question I guess I have shorted out the handwriting issue that I was having with the previous question so now let's read the second question. The second question was posted by skills game and it says that a water body having a surface area of 2000 hectares. So we have got a water body whose surface area is given to us that is 2000 hectares and it is also saying that 10.8 liters of water was added to bring the water surface in the evaporation pan to the stipulated level to somehow some amount of water that has been evaporated to bring it to the stipulated level 10.8 liters of water was added and also there was some nearby rain gauge which measured a 3.6 mm of rainfall the diameter of the pan is given to us which is the standard value of 122 centimeter which is seen in most of the class a pans and also there is the pan coefficient that is 0 0.7 0 0.7 is the pan coefficient so we are asked to find the evaporation from the water body and we have to report the answer in millions of meter cube. Of course, there is going to be a huge amount of evaporation when we are seeing a huge water body of 2000 hectares. So now let's write the given parameters in the question. First of all, we have the surface area 
of the water body and let this be as a let this be as a and that is equal to 2000 hectares and 2000 hectares upon converting it to meter square will be 2000 sorry 2 multiplied by 10 raised to the power 7 meter square when we are converting hectares to meter square we multiply 10 raised to the power 4 and that gives me 2 multiplied by 10 raised to the power 7 meter square next we are also given the pan coefficient and let us consider it to be c because it's a coefficient and mostly we take pan coefficient as c and this is given to be 0 0.7 so we have a water body with a, a surface area 2 multiplied by 10 to raise to the power 7 meter square and we also have a pan coefficient of c 0 0.7 next also we have the dia of the pan given to us dia of pan oh, let's just directly take it as 122 centimeters and it is basically sorry about that one. yeah and this is basically equal to 1.22 meters this is a dia of the pan given to us now if i am going to get the area of this particular pan area of pan that will be equal to pi by 4 multiplied by 1.22 square because the pan is circular and the diameter is given to us as 1.22 so pi by 4 multiplied by the dia square is the area of some cir circular surface so that's how i'm going to get the area surface area of the pan and pi by 4 multiplied by 1.22 square gives me 1.169 meter square so this was the area of the pan so we are also given that the volume of water that was added to the pan as 10.8 liters I'm really sorry about the handwriting because my stylus isn't that good but I am doing my best uh, I hope uh, it's not as bad as the first question Anyways, I hope this is readable to you that this is 10.8 liters of water was added to the pan so as to bring the water surface up to the stipulated level. And you can say that this is equal to 10.8 multiplied by, sorry not multiplied if I am going to convert liters to meter cube I am going to divide it with 1000 and that is going to give me 0 0.0108 meters cube this is the volume of the water that is added so if I am interested to get the depth of water that is added to the pan what I am going to do is that I am going to divide this particular volume with the surface area which I have got in the previous step right so the let me scroll this one a bit
depth of water will be zero point zero one zero eight divided by one point one six nine and that is gonna give me nine point two three nine multiplied by ten raised to the power minus three meters yes so i am gonna get something around 9.239 millimeters or 9.239 raised to the power 10 multiplied by 10 raised to the power minus 3 meter depth of water added to the pan okay so this was the depth now just can you interpret with this th this, this with one thing that this was the pan given to me and suppose this was my stipulated level the water is somehow over here and why did this water go down at first why did this water go down and what why i am going to get some water added to reach the to make the level reach the stipulated stipulated level which is given to us this is mainly because that this amount of water has been evaporated and that much water is being added to make the water level reach the stipulated level so one way you can say that this depth of water this is basically the evaporation from the pan that has been that has taken place so you can write that evaporation from the pan let's represent it with e pan and that is equal to 9.239 multiplied by 10 raised to the power minus 3 meter so this is my e pen now the lake evaporation lake evaporation sorry about that the lake evaporation that is L is given by C multiplied by A multiplied by E pan so basically the lake evaporation is the product of the pan coefficient the surface area of the lake and also the evaporation that is taking place in the pan so i have c as 0 0.7 multiplied by area as 2 multiplied by 10 raised to the power 7 and i also have the e pan as e pan as uh, 9.239 multiplied by 10 raised to the power minus 3 I hope you are getting the picture of the solution this will be the product of the pan coefficient the area of the water body the surface area of the water body and the pan evaporation that is taking place so if I multiply this I will be getting the lake evaporation as 129.346 meter cube and to represent it in millions of meter cube we have to take the point or the decimal over here that is 0 0.13 millions of meter cube so this is the lake evaporation that is taking place the next question is a conceptual question and it is again from skills game and it shows that Bowen's ratio is the ratio of and we are given four options is it vapor heat flux and the sensible heat flux or is it vapor flux and the sensible heat flux or is it sensible heat flux and the vapor heat flux 
or is it the sensible heat flux and the vapor flux? So it's a good question. It's a good conceptual question. Uh, let me tell you what's the Bowen's ratio is. The Bowen's ratio is basically, let us represent it with B. The Bowen's ratio is the ratio of sensible heating upon the latent heating so my sensible heating is going to be at the numerator so in my options 3 and 4 i can see that the sensible heat flux is the numerator then the word which is written first is actually the numerator and the word which is written second is the denominator so if it is shown that if it is writing that sensible heat flux and vapor heat flux or sensible heat flux and vapor flux it means sensible heat flux upon the vapor flux or the vapor heat flux so now so basically you can see that the latent heating is that energy that needs to be converted when a vapor when a liquid is being converted to vapor or a solid is being converted to a liquid so on the contrary in the fourth option you are seeing that there is written vapor flux which is basically which basically means the flow of the vapor right and whereas the vapor heat flux means the flow of the vapor heat or the heating that is taking place so so in that sense i am not going to go with option four i am not going to go with option four but i am gonna go with option three because it is telling about the flux of the sensible heat and the vapor heat so here you can say that latent heat is nothing but the vapor heat flux so the correct answer is option three that is the ratio of sensible heat flux and the vapor heat flux moving on to the next question this is another conceptual question and this time it is from Rajan says that the evaporation calculated using evaporation needs to be multiplied with panic coefficient because of the eh? the evaporation calculated using evaporation evaporation calculated using evaporation needs to be multiplied with pan coefficient because of the i think uh, uh, some words might be missing in this uh, so let us say that the question was something like that the lake evaporation calculated using the pan evaporation because in general we calculate the lake evaporation with the help of the pan evaporation so the lake so let's reframe the question like this that the the lake evaporation calculated using the pan evaporation needs to be multiplied with the pan coefficient because of the dash and let me tell you one thing whenever you are seeing the evaporation in a pan you are just seeing it in the pan it's a very small entity and not many climatic factors or environmental factors that will be affecting that pan so if i am going to see the evaporation of a whole lake of a big lake and and i am going to correlate with the pan then certainly it will it won't be exactly same as that what is happening with the pan so this factor that is the pan coefficient that is needed to be multiplied uh, with the pan evaporation and also with the surface area of the lake so that we are gonna get the lake evaporation so in the blank you are gonna fill it with climatic factors you can say that the climate or the climatic factors are the main reason behind the multiplication of the pan coefficient with the pan evaporation in order to get the lake coefficient so 
the fifth and the last question is from skills game and the person is asking that the ratio of actual evapotranspiration that is AET and potential evapotranspiration lies in the range of which of the following ranges that is given to me in the option so let me tell you PET or the potential evapotranspiration that is the maximum amount of evapotranspiration that can occur right and at the same time the actual evapotranspiration means the evapotranspiration that is actually occurring at that time in that particular sample or that particular water body or particular plant whatever you are going to say so if i am going to take a ratio of aet and pet so i have got two probabilities like firstly the aet there's not at all any evapotranspiration that is occurring that the AET can be zero also the PET means the maximum amount of evapotranspiration that can occur so the maximum value that an AET can have is the PET so when it, when the AET is equal to PET then it will be basically PET upon PET that is equal to one so you can say that the value of this ratio lies between 0 and 1 so my correct option is option 3 that is 0 to 1 so this was it about my first Q&A video in my channel I hope you have enjoyed this video please do put a like if you really like this video and also share this video recommend my channel to your friends who are from civil engineering or the climatic engineering backgrounds and who mostly need this type of questions to be solved also if you want more of q a videos please keep on posting questions in the comments and i'll be very happy to answer them all and i'll be making them in my next q a video so it's all upon you and also please do not forget to subscribe my channel if you are new to this channel and also please do recommend to your friends about this channel Thank you and have a good day.